welcome back. We are here with Pat McGuigan for this week's Capitol Report. Um, Pat, there's been a lot of talk about who won and who lost in the legislative session. Talk about some things that were unresolved that we'll see next session. Well, I expect uh, the main issue that we talked about last week, which is spending and taxes, to be back. You know, I think that there's a strong constituency in the Republican Party uh, in the legislature for tax cuts. The governor says she wants tax cuts. Uh, I think it was a pretty spectacular failure that they didn't get an income tax cut. Uh, so I think that issue will be back. That's the first one to mention. The Capitol building, whether it's done with cash receipts, you know, cash flow for the state, or it's done with a bond, uh, there is still uh, quite a bit of report uh, support for making sure that the Capitol building itself gets repaired. Other bond issues, kind of iffy. Finally, the whole issue of right-sizing government, uh, which uh, Governor Fallon campaigned on and which, again, conservatives are very supportive of, I'm not sure that voters are persuaded. I'm not sure I'm persuaded that Oklahoma's government is uh, too big. I think a case can be made that there's still room for more efficiency, so you'll see efficiency efforts and also some advocacy of uh, further reductions in agencies. Um, credits, tax exemptions, something we've talked about on Capitol Report a lot. Um, that issue will also be back. Finally, water. Water will be a big issue next year because we'll be dealing either with the aftermath of litigation or a continuance of the current kind of tense set of negotiations between the major tribes and the state government. Mm -hmm. Briefly talk about how the elections of 2012 will play into this process. Well, you could make the case that it probably should operate, uh, the lack of achievement should operate to the detriment of the Republicans in the legislature, but I kind of doubt that's going to happen. And the reason is that the heading the Democratic ticket is Barack Obama. And Obama, uh, good, bad, or indifferent, regardless of how you feel about him in Oklahoma, he's very unpopular. Uh, the Republican nominee, Romney, and his running mate will carry the state. And I believe that will have some down-ballot uh, pressure. Having said that, the Republicans nonetheless run the risk in Oklahoma of degrading or, what's the word, uh, losing the effectiveness of the Republican brand, if you will, if you think of it in marketing terms. Much like happened with uh, uh, B George Bush the Younger, the second Bush president, especially the last five or six years of his presidency, the steady increase in spending. Uh, and lack of progress on right-sizing uh, the federal government eroded the Republican brand and contributed to Obama's victory in 2008. So even though Republicans will do fine in Oklahoma, I think they have a problem of uh, protecting the efficacy, if you will, the effectiveness of their brand unless they get back on the spending and tax issues. Okay, now switching gears, Oklahoma and Taiwan. You recently traveled to Taiwan. Talk about the connections there and why it's important to Oklahoma. Well, it is important. It's uh, uh, millions and millions of dollars worth of trade going both directions. They buy our wheat. It turns out that both our soft wheat and our hard wheat are good for their breads and in the case of the hard wheat, I believe, for the uh, noodles. Uh, which are universally prevalent in Taiwan. Uh, last year, a major agreement was signed to uh, import more U.S. wheat, including more Oklahoma wheat, and that was signed right here at the uh, Capitol in Oklahoma City. So you have that practical aspect. Uh, additionally, uh, the president of Taiwan, President Ma, uh, told me and other reporters in a press conference uh, that they're going to be working on the issue of beef imports. Now, we use an additive um, in American beef to promote leanness in the meat, uh, which has uh, a lot of opposition among domestic forces in Taiwan. So that's a sticking point, if you will, but President Ma said that was going to be subjected to negotiation. Finally, real quickly, the relationship between the United States and Taiwan goes back um, to uh, even before World War II. After World War II, when the communists took control of the mainland, uh, the Taiwan government was formed by the Republic of China government. And the relationship has always been warm, even though formally the United States now recognizes the mainland. That relationship is going to remain strong, um, I believe, for the foreseeable future. Congress recently voted to sell them more airplanes. But finally, the last thing, it's a long, cordial relationship. And when I got off the plane and took a shuttle to the hotel in 
Taipei, the first thing the guy asked when he knew I was from Oklahoma City was, how are the Thunder doing? Do you think <laughs> and then he analyzed the two, uh, first two games of the, that round involving the Lakers. Uh, and he declared that uh, Harden is the best sixth man in the world. Well, we already knew that. Yeah, but they know it in Taipei. That's the point. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Pat McGuigan of CapitalBeatOK.com for our Capital Report. Have a great rest of the weekend, folks.